Welcome into Between the Pylons. I'm John Camacho. And this is Jacob Waters. And this is the eighth installment of the Power Ranking Show. I would say we are exactly halfway through the season, but we're not because there's, what, seven teams ga- 17 games now, so it's weird. There is no true halfway point. Uh, but here we are. We are going to be talking power rankings, our changes, and it's kind of a quiet week. I'm not going to lie. As far as changes, uh, one big one that we're going to hit really, really hard uh Let's not bury the lead. Let's get right into it here. And we're going to start with playing a clip from last week's episode talking about a very interesting matchup that happened this week. Excited to see this litmus test overall of what the Bengals can give the Ravens because, listen, if the Bengals come out and win this game, they're they're tied for the AFC North right now. They're sitting there at five and two. They would they're be ahead. They're sitting there at five and two. And they, yeah, and technically victory, they, would yeah. Be, they would be sitting atop the AFC North. And it's a good division. It really is. You have the Browns, yes, banged up here and there, but I would say that would assert the Bengals right up there with all of them. And I think it would it would kind of we would have to reflect in our rankings next week and say, hey, they are just as much here as anyone else in this division right now. I'll sit here and say right now, if the Bengals beat the Ravens in any fashion. I'm putting the Bengals in my top 10. Yes. And I don't know how that'll shake out for our rankings, but I think it'll be close. Yeah, and the Bengals not only beat the Ravens, but they put a beat down on the Ravens. And true to form, the Bengals are in our top 10, moving up from 15 to number 7 this week, cracking the top 10 for the first time this year. The Bengals are real. I mean, there's no other way to say it. 5-2, and two, sitting atop their division, beating teams that are really, really good. They, we got to remember, it wasn't that long ago, they went to the... the They went to overtime with the Packers, and that was a part of the season where we thought, oh, maybe the Packers just aren't that good. And I think it's the other way around. I think the Bengals were kind of, you know, finding their way early on in the season, but they are are in full stride right now, and they're playing really, really well. Yeah, and to give the Bengals some more credit on that Packers game, that was the game that had six missed field goals back and forth, back and forth, which, and then Joe Burrow had to go to the hospital randomly after the game, so he was battling an injury throughout the game. And the field goals alone speaks for itself. The Bengals pretty much had that win under their belt, and then they would have already been even higher than they are now. So it goes to show at the beginning of the year, we had them placed at 26, and I think a lot of people out there kind of had the same feeling that, you know, Joe Burrow had that ACL injury, so he was coming back. We have to see him get, you know, reacquainted again with this new offensive line, with some of these new weapons, and see it going. And honestly, they are clicking well ahead of schedule. They're an entire year above the rebuild process now. And honestly, I would say if they can continue strides like this, this year is already looking like playoff hopes. So if they can continue this, they have a window opening soon. And it's so insane to think about saying that with the Cincinnati Bengals because they opened up week one at 26. They won their first week's game against the Vikings in overtime, bounced up to 23. Then they lost week three, fell back to 26, bounced up to 19, 17, 14, 15. And then this impressive win against the Ravens leads them up to our top 10. And it's perfect right where they sit because they had that really, really close weird game. Like we said, the missed field goals against the Packers. They're at seven, but they are a true contender. With that offense, with Joe Burrow, and let's talk about Jamar Chase. Through eight games, he has, what, 752 yards and some touchdowns. They said that is the most all-time ever by a rookie, and there's been some pretty impressive guys, especially the way that we see wide receivers hit nowadays. He's got it. Yeah, he he broke the record that I believe was what Randy Moss's record. Yeah. He broke the record in that game, and then he had the I think t- I mean it was on highlight reels everywhere. Had but like he had that yard, eighty-two yard yeah. touchdown run. It was a slant where he breaks two tackles after catching the ball and is just gone. He's faster than everybody on the field, and that just put a ton of distance between him and the last record book holder. And that's a record that I don't know if it's going to be hit uh, anytime soon. Uh, this is a special guy coming out of college. We we all knew it. We all had him uh, very high. Highly rated. Uh, everyone expected him to be a high draft pick. Obviously, goes to his former college quarterback, and they are having just an amazing start of the season. After having a really rough training camp, where you know we were getting a lot of reports that it wasn't working, a lot of reports on drops, and I mean those are just a thing of the past. This is absolutely amazing. Uh, it, it goes to show, kind of just trust the process sometimes with some of these great athletes. Uh, it, you know, I've never, I don't think I've ever seen anything like it personally. I don't really remember the Randy Moss, you know, rookie year very well. So, like, I can't think of another player that has come on this strong and through eight weeks, through seven weeks, looks like a top five wide receiver in the game, let alone rookie. Yes, no, he, top five for sure. Yeah. 
I, I can't name five better players. It's absolutely amazing. And then on top of that, defense playing well. Joe Mixon playing well. Uh, Joe Burrow playing like that number one pick that he was. Uh, this team is in prime position to you know go really far into the season. Maybe win a uh, a, if, a not a first round bye because there's only one of those now. But win the division maybe. I mean that's obviously they're still tied with the Ravens and that's going to be a close race all the way down to the finish. But they showed that they can not only win against the Ravens, they can do what they want, control the Ravens. Absolutely. That's impressive. And, and I would go so far as to say, I watched that game. Lamar played well. Yeah. It wasn't one of those things where, like, Lamar just had a bad week or, or, you know, the team just fell apart. The Bengals won. Like, it wasn't the Ravens lost. The Bengals won that game. And I think that's a really important little, you know, asterisk to put on there that, like, this is, they deserve this spot and they could climb this ranking even more. Another team that we talked about last week, I think we actually talked about more on the pod than we did on the uh, po- on the Power Ranking show, uh, but we talked about the Tennessee Titans and how they were really, really looking like a team that could, you know, maybe maybe contend in the in the conference. Like they had just beaten the Bills on Monday night. We were all hyped up and we were thinking, okay, well they have to play the Chiefs. You know, Chiefs are feel like it's they're coming back, back on a roll. Earth, yeah. yeah, it feels like this is a game the Titans lose. Yeah, it wasn't even close. No, Patrick Mahomes doesn't even throw for a touchdown. I don't even think he eclipsed 200 yards all told. The defense controlled the Chiefs for four quarters. The offense did whatever they wanted on that side of the ball. They had a dominating performance against the Chiefs, and the Titans are sitting there right behind the Bengals at eight as another top 10 team that I would argue none of us saw coming even three weeks into the year. Well, it's because of the sample size that we got to see out of the Titans. Yeah. And I, w- I would go one week further and say after that loss to the Jets, it was like, you know what? I think we know what the Titans are. They mm-hmm. are once again a good team that is not great, at that. I'm saying, at that point in time. They're a good team. They can, you know, Derrick Henry can take care of business and do some things. But to see the Titans show up in back-to-back weeks and to see them do it in such different formats, mm-hmm. to, to handle the Bills neck and neck, to be in a really, really close contested battle the entire way through and fight till the very end, and then you saw the defensive stop right there. That is an incredible thing that you can build upon and win. And then also, this week against the Chiefs spoke more to me because, listen, I'm like I said, I'm a Vikings fan, but I always pull for the Titans. I've always rooted for them, and I've watched them for a long time being in the area. And one thing I can always say about the Titans is that they very rarely are up at a team at half and then slam on the gas and really break it off in them. Typically, it's always the Titans will play down to their opponent or they'll always give them a chance to come back, whatever the case may be. Against the Chiefs, they did something, and it was exactly that that they never do. They stepped on the gas. They completely manhandled them because with a team like the Chiefs, they have the firepower, even with an impressive win. I think it was 17-3 to at half or 17-0, whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. could have been more than that. The Chiefs are a few plays away any given second from maintaining all that momentum back, getting everything back, and making it happen. But they had Mahomes looking silly out there. It was really, really bad. A great job by the Titans. I am very concerned about the Chiefs, but a great job by the Titans. And this is another team lump them right with the Bengals. I'm telling you, they can make some noise and they could upset somebody. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. And I mean, we've, we've talked about the Titans a bunch over the past couple of weeks. Uh, so I do want to kind of touch on what you just said about the Chiefs here just for a second. Very worried about the Chiefs. Listen, this is what, a three and four team now that has looked really bad at times, that has doesn't have really that marquee win that I would even say. And they're still sitting there at, at 12 on our power rankings. The amount of respect that I think we're both giving them. And, you know, listen, I'm trying to, you know, point the finger at us, even though we're the ones that make the rankings. Yeah. But the amount of respect that we're giving the Chiefs after just a horrendous season so far, the their very ugly hit on Mahomes late that, you know, we don't know how that's going to play out. Obviously, he passed concussion protocol. The, the thought is he's probably going to play and everything will be fine. But you never know for sure. Sitting at 12, can, can you give the justif- justification there? I mean, I can look for some justification, but right now I'm probably going to be pretty harsh. Patrick Mahomes is leading the league in interceptions right now. Um, The way that they are still trying to play hero ball, it's the format in which they're trying to attack these deep, long-developing plays that are are very, very awesome whenever they hit, but they're also very high turnover-worthy plays. And Patrick Mahomes is a lot of things, so let him do exactly that. Don't make him just play in this deep drop back got to do this backyard bull crap, running around, slinging sidearm. Listen, it's nice when it works, but you get pinned up whenever it doesn't. And right now, it's not. So Andy Reid, as good of a coach as you are, and your resume speaks for itself, you are a very good coach. You have the system. You have the players. You have the scheme to adjust 
to be able to adapt and say, hey, we still have these big hitters. We can still do this any given Sunday that we want, but let's kind of bring this down a little bit and do some small ball. I'm not saying rely on the running game. The Chiefs have very, very rarely ever had a run game, but you have the speed up close to do some short slants, to get some bubbles involved, to really use Travis Kelsey on some developing stuff in the middle short like they used to do. They used to do it all the time. Right now, I just feel like the Chiefs are constantly being put in second and long passing plays where it's some type of long developing thing, and if it hits right there, they're going to get it. If, if they're able to hit it and they get a third and short, they're good. But if they miss that, then it, it puts that pressure back on Mahomes for a third and long to where I feel like it, it goes first read, second read, third read, pass breakdown, running around, and then he throws some some weird pass. I don't know what's going on there. I don't know if he's holding on to the ball too long. I'm Listen, for all the respect and praise that Mahomes gets, as he, he deserves, Absolutely. he deserves flack here. He yeah. does. He has slacked off a lot. Yes, he is still an amazing, phenomenal quarterback, one of the best in the league by far, but he is definitely having a slump season. It's catching up to him. Yeah, you wonder, you know, back-to-back Super Bowls obviously is rough, really. You you can't really point to a lot of teams that have, like, done that. I mean, the the Patriots is one, even in the heyday of Tom Brady, they would go to back-to-back and, you know, not have a slump season the way we're seeing with the Chiefs, but they wouldn't go three times. I can't really remember a time they went three times in a row. Maybe they did back in the early, uh, early 2000s. But uh, at, at the end of the day, yeah, we've seen this a lot with teams, you know, falling off a little bit after multiple Super Bowls. Really, a lot of teams just do after one Super Bowl. Uh, the Chiefs here, it's it's strange to see. And I will say, yeah, listen, they're still higher on my personal ranking versus his. And just so you guys know, peeling back the curtain, we each make our separate power rankings and then we combine them to get our official between the pylons power rankings. And and I do keep giving them a little bit more respect than, than you are. I know that. And, and I they just... They deserve it. They've, they've earned it. Yeah, based they've on earned their it. past resume. Absolutely. I get that. Absolutely. But and you're not like... Uh, you're not no, in the dumpster no, with them. Sure. But I, I certainly, I, I certainly am kind of like... I, I'm still believing that, like, hey, that small ball is going to happen. They're going to go look at the the mid-2000 Patriots and the a million different ways that they got Wes Welker the ball, the million different ways that they could run a screen or, you know, anything. And, and Andy Reid has that in the system. We've seen it. We know that he has a million ways Man, they to— And Tyreek and Travis Kelsey. Yeah, absolutely, to, to, you know, run through the pass, essentially, right? Give, give Patrick Mahomes 80,000 different ways to throw a three-yard— easy read, almost un- undefendable, really, and make defenses, you know, play sound football to beat you, and you have the guys that can break away. Exactly. You have the Tyree Kills. You have the Travis Kelsey's. They don't need to catch the ball 30 yards on the field. Of course they can do it. Even in this loss, Patrick Mahomes still had a handful of throws that were, you know, that you don't see a majority of the quarterbacks in the NFL make. Yeah, he has the flash. But... At the end of the day, if he's constantly having to avoid pressure, constantly having to do all these things, and constantly having to throw risky balls because he's gotten away with it so much, you're going to have a, a you know a string of games like he's had with a lot of interceptions, leading the league in interceptions. That's ridiculous to say. I don't think anybody had that prop bet coming into the season. That's, that's <laughs> um, uh, So, yeah, very unfortunate. And I will say, listen, if it continues, if we're looking at week nine and they, they have four wins, if they, if they, you know, can't turn around quickly, they are going to fall down. They, they are going to be in the same conversation as the, the Patriots, Raiders, Steelers in the mid to late round of our, our uh, power rankings. And we're not going to give them the respect that they've obviously earned over the past two years, still having that main cohesive unit that we've seen be so, so special. They're, they're, a, they're a damn good team. Yeah. And we I think no matter what, we think that they're making the playoffs. They're going to be able to write this thing enough to where they'll be able to get the job done and show up and show out whenever the time matters most. That just feels like the what Kansas City does. That feels yeah. like what they've always done. Yeah. And, you know, like you said, we can't, we can't write them off yet. There's no way around it. But to see the way that Mahomes is playing sometimes, I know I'm a little too harsh on it, but even looking back at their win versus Washington, the scoreboard said that they dominated that game. They did not dominate that game against a very, very overrated Washington team. Patrick Mahomes was trying to give the game away up until halftime, and then he was able to settle down. I'm just saying in all of his greatness that he is, such a young career, it's really starting to mirror the likes of an early Russell Wilson, and I don't want to see it go to that. I want to see this window stay wide open because you got to think, Russ went to one early. He got one early. He went to two early, actually, and got one. Mahomes been to two, got one. Yeah, listen. I mean, you're you're preaching the choir. Absolutely. Uh, we, I look at I, I look at the uh, the playoff seating right now, and right now they're they're sitting. The Chiefs are sitting at 11th in the AFC. Out of 16 teams, they're 11th. They're right ahead of the Broncos right now in their own division. That that's scary. They're they're smack dab in between the Colts and the Broncos in the AFC. Teams like the Patriots and Steelers, Browns, 
Chargers, all teams are significantly ahead of them. Obviously, they have better records and all that. But no, we don't believe really realistically that any of those teams are actually better than the Chiefs. And I, I'm, I don't. I'm not sitting here. If, if they play any of those teams, maybe the Chargers. I, I would, you know, think twice about. But I would take the Chiefs and I would give them points too. You know what I mean? As far as a, a betting aspect to it, um, man, it's it's interesting to see. I, I do want to touch on one other thing that we did in this uh, rankings before we move on to our uh, to our you know matchups that we're looking forward to the most. We both unanimously decided to give respect to the teams that have the record and, and give respect to the record itself on both sides. If you look at number one overall, we have the Cardinals sitting at number one. They were at number two last week. Tampa Bay didn't do anything wrong, but it's just been too long. The Cardinals have been too good for too long. I'm sitting here wearing my brand new Kyler Murray jersey, number one. You're wearing a number one too, which I, I, I like the uh, I like that we spell cam. eleven there. I like yeah. that. Uh, but hey, the Cardinals absolutely deserve that. We talked about it last week how you know they jumped up to number two, and you know we don't have to touch on the Cardinals for a super long time. But on the f- tail end of that, a Lions team that like we've given a lot of respect to for the amount of fight that they've had. Or finally accepting that, you know, giving them that couple game drop and having them at 32 Fight overall. only takes you so far. Yeah, absolutely. It does. At the end of the day, you know, you pulled out all the stops against a Rams team. You actually played better. You covered the spread and played better than I think a lot of people expected. But at the end of the day, uh, you know. Once again, it's, it's one of those games where I want to admire their performance. Against yeah. a oh, very, very tough opponent. Yeah. They showed up. They tried hard. They did it against the Packers. They did it week one. I can't remember who they played exactly. But they have had several games where they have showed up, put up a really good fight, and tried to go toe-to-toe. But at the end of the day, talent just stacks up, and, and talent is what it is. The Lions are not going to be able to do much. And at a certain point, fight only gets you so far. And right now, it's getting them at 32 out of 32. All right. Let's close out the show with what we do every single week, taking a look forward to some matchups that we are really, really excited about. And I will let you go first here. Yeah, we get this one really, really quick. It's on Thursday Night Football, and last week's game was a dud. So I am so excited to see this powerhouse of a matchup. We get the Green Bay Packers at 6-1 and one versus the undefeated Arizona Cardinals at 7-0. and oh. And listen, I don't think it's really going to say much about how it stacks up in our power rankings, but I think it's going to be a really, really good game. And honestly, I hate to say it because the Cardinals are sitting one, but I keep waiting for that slip. You know, I, I don't want to sound like a hater, but it's exactly that. I keep waiting for the slip. I keep waiting for the fall. So I'm curious to see how they're able to handle a short week. I'm curious to see with the spotlight on, you know, Kyler and Diops have always showed up and showed out when they do, and that defense is promising. But the Packers are a very quiet 6-1 and one team. I haven't heard a lot of people talk too much about them, honestly. And if the Packers are able to win this game, I th- of course the Cardinals will fall out, but then it really speaks highly what the Packers are able to do as a system. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Incredibly excited for that game. I want to go another way with it. I want to talk about some nail in the coffin games, all right? And there's two games that that come to mind for me for teams that just I mean, it's over if they lose this week kind of thing. All right, we're getting to that point in the season. We've already had it a handful of times with, you know, the Dolphins the past two weeks. They're one and six now, losing to the Falcons, Jags. Those were nail in the coffin games. It was done, right? Let's talk about some teams having a little bit better record than that, but not by much. First, the 49ers and Bears. 49ers at two and four. Yeah, it's over if they lose this game. And really, the spotlight starts to go on Kyle Shanahan and that entire front office because in his tenure, they've had one winning season. Yeah, they happen to go to the Super Bowl and be a couple plays away from winning it, but they've had one winning season in this Kyle Han- Shanahan with tenure a lot of injury outs, with yeah. a lot of injuries, and there's a lot of things you talk about every single year. They've seen, they're have they obviously, at, before the really bad, they had the come, back, the come up, but after that Super Bowl season, every single year, it's been, this team can be great, this team can be great. You can see it. You see the talent. It's awesome. They play the Bears this week, and again, it's a nail in the coffin game for, for a Bears team that, yeah, on paper, not probably... T- more talented the 49ers but you wonder what that defense can do against this 49ers team uh you wonder if uh if you know fields can really come alive this week listen he had a tough matchup against the bucks i'm not gonna disparage him by in any way obviously he doesn't have the start it was to his ugly, career but, i mean you expect it yeah no absolutely and, and obviously he doesn't have the start to the career he hoped for but
but he can still be great. And, and you, you kind of think at three and four, if they go down to three and five with the Packers in the division playing awesome, with the Vikings playing a lot better than anybody expected, it's it's over. It's done. And yes. the 49ers obviously already in a tough division. So you could argue is already over, but I, I think for the talent they have, I give them a little bit more credit being able to bounce back. And then the other game I want to talk about, Washington and the Broncos. These are two teams to me that have really, really good pieces. All right. Mm -hmm. Are they complete football team? No. But both really good defenses. Absolutely. Overall. Good defenses. Great weapons on the offensive side of the ball. Jerry Judy coming back from injury. Terry McLaurin, arguably one of the better uh, wide receivers in the league, doesn't get a whole lot of credit. Questions of the quarterback position, question of the uh, offensive line. Yes, they're they're not a complete team, but Washington sitting sitting there at five and two, or excuse me, at two and five, very different. Uh, Washington sitting there at two and five. Broncos sitting there at three and four. Both teams, they have to get a win this week, and if they don't, it's over. And, I mean, I, I don't think there's any other way to say it. I like the way you look at it. I was looking at some of these other matchups, too, and I see I see a few more that kind of, you know, spell nail in the coffin. Panthers, Falcons, these are very average, middle-of-the-road records. Do I think that either of those teams, any of these teams for that matter, can truly compete at the end of the day for the big, big thing? No, honestly. But... When you're looking at trying to, you know, trying to salvage this and right this ship, yeah, I mean, this is one where for the for Washington and the 49ers, especially having that two win, if they stay stagnant right now and drop that, they are officially done. Also, want to give a shout out to some Sunday night football action. Dallas Cowboys face on my Minnesota Vikings. Dallas Cowboys are a monster this year. They really are. But my Vikings have played a lot of good, tough football, and unfortunate. you got to think, that's one reason why I've been so hesitant to put the Cardinals up there as the undefeated team, because if the Vikings can kick a field goal, they're not that. That's how quickly that goes away. And then we're talking about a 5-1 and one matchup versus a 4-2 and two with an impressive win here and there. Also, an overtime loss to the Bengals. Listen, I know exactly what it sounds like. I'm making excuses <laughs> for my team. I will continue to do that. Skull. I love it. Hey, that's the best way to end this episode of the Power Rankings. Uh, I wish I could stay a little bit longer and give some excuses for my Dolphins, but uh, there aren't many to go around there. You got six games <laughs> worth. I, uh, I had three to make up for. Um, all right, guys, we're going to close it out. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. We really, really appreciate you. Peace. Seven.